All right, what happened? Okay, I got to number four, eh? I actually, I surpassed the, the Polish uh, the Polish fish. So I get to fourth place um, with nine out of 11. So I get, what, like 250 sandals or 250 bananas? I don't know what it is, but we get something. So anyway, we do finish in fourth place, pretty good. And we are going to move on. You guys, we have a big article that we have to cover. Um, so let me pull this up and let me change the scene, obviously. Big, big article. Um, there we go. Let me Let me make everything smaller. Let me adjust the board, obviously, and here we go. Let's pull this out and pull this out. All right. So just for right now, okay, there we go. I'll, I'll make it smaller in a second, but we have this article from the Wall Street Journal. We have how sexual assault allegations against a U.S. chess grandmaster went unaddressed for years. Numerous women have accused elite player and coach Alejandro Ramirez of misconduct. Two bodies that run chess in the U.S. allegedly knew of accusations for several years. Ooh, okay. So let's jump into the article. Now I'll change the, change the board dimensions, of, or not board dimensions, but the scene dimensions. Give me one second. Um, and here we go. Let me make this a little bit bigger. All right, there we go. So we have this article from the Wall Street Journal. This is written by... Andrew Beaton and Joshua Robinson, who I believe are the two people who cover this topic, or cover chess, I should say. All right. When former U.S. women's chess champion Jennifer Shahadi alleged on social media last month that she had been sexually assaulted by a prominent grandmaster named Alejandro Ramirez, she had no idea it would set off a broad wave of additional allegations. Ms. Shahadi says she was sexually assaulted twice by Mr. Ramirez, one of the most recognizable faces in American chess over the past two decades. Her allegations and others in recent years were reported to top chess bodies, including the U.S. Chess Federation and the powerful St. Louis Chess Club, which failed to act or effectively investigate when first learning of them, according to interviews and documents reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. Jeez, okay. <sighs> okay. Then, over the course of a few days after a tweet, messages poured in. Ten other women from the chess community reached out to Ms. Shahadi to say they had also been assaulted or harassed by him, according to texts and direct messages the journal reviewed. Yikes. The allegations represent a stunning turn for Mr. Ramirez, a 34-year-old who was once the second youngest grandmaster in the world and the first from Central America to earn the title. Mr. Ramirez, who was born in Costa Rica, switched to representing the U.S. in international competition in 2011. In addition to playing at an elite level, he has helped coach a world championship contender, mentored younger players, and built a profile as a go-to commentator for marquee events. Oh, man. In interviews, eight women accused Mr. Ramirez of wrongdoing, saying that he had used his status in chess to put himself in positions of influence and make repeated unwanted sexual advances toward them, since 2011. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is where, like, I, I, I know we're an emote would only. I'm literally thinking failfish right now. I'm, I'm thinking like, it's like the failfish emote is, is all I can, is what I'm thinking in my mind. Um, Mr. Ramirez, they said, became physically aggressive as he forcibly kissed and groped them without their consent. Three were under the age of 18 at the time of the alleged incidents, including one who said Mr. Ramirez supplied her with vodka before he coerced her into performing oral sex. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, my God. This is terrible. This is really, really bad. <sighs> On Monday, two days after being presented with a detailed list of the allegations against him by the journal, Mr. Ramirez issued a press release through through his attorney saying that he resigned from his role to the St. Louis Chess Club and as coach of the St. Louis University Chess Team because the investigations now being run by U.S. Chess and the club had become a negative distraction. Super, and here, here's the quote from, I think, his attorney, which says, superimposing today's mores on erroneous recitals of acts of yesteryear is a recipe for disaster for both the accused and the accuser, Mr. Ramirez's attorney, Albert Watkins, said. Mr. Watkins didn't comment on the specific allegations, saying he had been directed to respect the confidentiality of the investigative undertaking. In this era of introspection and sensitivity to all matters, Me Too related, Mr. Ramirez remains very supportive of those who seek to raise issues of concern about anyone, Mr. Watkins wrote in an email to the journal. Okay. 
Allegations about Mr. Ramirez's conduct have been known to top chess bodies, including the U.S. Chess Federation and the St. Louis Chess Club, the global hub for the game backed by billionaire Rex Singfield, for several years. Ay 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 ay. Oh man, yeah, this is this is. It just gets worse and worse as I'm reading through this article. It gets worse and worse. A lawyer for the St. Louis Chess Club wrote in a 2021 letter that it was aware of Ms. Shahadi's allegations in 2020. In 2021, the club and U.S. Chess were informed of allegations against Mr. Ramirez, including the abuse of a 15-year-old, according to interviews and documents reviewed by the journal. Wait. Wait a second. So what they're saying here is that U.S. Chess Federation, which is they're, they're the governing body of, of chess here in the United States, they were aware of these allegations in 2021. And we're now in 2023 and nothing has happened. Uh, uh, a big F, big F, F's in chat. Um, uh, I almost have no words for this. Jeez. Um, and documents reviewed by the journal. Mr. Ramirez was nonetheless tapped to coach the U.S. women's team at the World Chess Olympiad in Chennai, India in 2022. Oh my gosh. So it, what to even say about this? So it's, it's like they were aware of the allegations in 2021, but he was still coaching the women's team at the Olympiad in 2022. Oy, oy, oy. Oy, oy, oy. Oy, oy, oy. And also to, to clarify something else, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but my understanding of how coaches are picked for the Olympiad is that the United States Chess Federation, I'm, I speak about this from the men's perspective, so I don't know if the women have the same process, but like normally there's a list of coaches that U.S. Chess Federation has sent out a list of the coaches that have been submitted to them who want to coach the teams, the men and, and women's team respectively. So it probably had to go through the U.S. Chess Federation, unless I'm misunderstanding this in terms of how a name gets submitted for, uh, for the possibility of being a coach. So this, is, this looks really, really bad. Mr. Ramirez is now being investigated by the United States Chess Federation and the St. Louis Chess Club, where he was a prominent figure as a resident grandmaster and commentator. He was previously removed from coaching St. Louis University's chess team on February 16th. The school said said the day or the school said the day after Shahadi's tweets or Shahadi's tweet. That's also when Mr. Ramirez was taken off the Athletes Commission of FIDE, Chess's Chess FIDE, Chess World's governing body. Fide said it made the decision following Shahadi's social media post pending the probe from U.S. Chess. Okay. The university, the, uni the university takes matters of sexual harassment and misconduct very seriously and has robust policies and procedures in place to respond to any report it receives, St. Louis University said in a statement. The powerful organization that oversee the game continue to place Mr. Ramirez in roles that often involve working closely with women, often under the age of 18, even after first learning about the allegations into him. Oy, oy, oy. Oy, oy, oy. This just gets worse and worse. It just gets worse. I mean, I'm wondering how long this article is, but this, this article is like killing me. Um, I was concerned that there was a clear and present danger that he could have interactions with girls and women, Ms. Shahadi said of her decision to go public. There are indications that Chess Powers knew of Mr. Ramirez's alleged behavior earlier than 2020. Another woman who was underage at the time of her alleged incident around eight years ago said that she was warned as early as 2016 by St. Louis Chess Club officials not to be alone with Ramirez after a party. Oh, man. I actually, I don't know what to say. This is... This is pretty terrible. This is really, really bad. Um, okay. All right. A player's mother, who is also involved in the sport, said she alerted the top U.S. chess official to Ramirez's behavior in 2017. The mother added that she was also present in 2017 when top executives at the St. Louis Chess Club joked about Ramirez's interest in young women. Uh... Ah, uh, ay ay ay, ay ay ay, ay ay ay. That's that. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm th I'm thinking of a certain word here that starts with an L. Actually, I got to be honest. 
there's a certain word that starts with an L that starts to pop into my mind based on what I'm reading. Um, and I don't mean loss. St. Louis Chess Club didn't respond to specific questions about its knowledge of the allegations. After the journal's inquiries, the club said in a statement that it, that it accepted Mr. Ramirez's resignation on Monday and that it has no further comment on this employment matter. Mr. Ramirez was the club's highest paid employee in 2018 and 2019, the most recent years for which the club's full tax returns were available through the Internal Revenue Service. Really? Wow. Okay. Um, so he was, he was the club's highest paid employee. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oy, oy, oy. Okay. Oh, the U.S. Chess Federation referred back to a statement dated February 15th in which it said it was aware that one of its employees ha has made serious allegations about a member of the chess community and had opened an investigation without naming Mr. Ramirez. The Federation didn't respond to the specific allegations that some of its employees had been aware of Mr. Ramirez's behavior. Ms. Shahadi, a 42-year-old women's grandmaster, said she was sexually assaulted by Mr. Ramirez twice. In the more recent of the two instances in 2014, she said they were at small gatherings in a large house in St. Louis when, at a moment when no one else was around, he slammed her against the wall and forcibly kissed her. Ay -ay -ay. Ay -ay -ay. Uh, and this, of course, like when they when the I mean when they're talking about gathering in a large house, this this pertains to the, the chess houses, which are which are close to the bro, or not close to the bro. Sorry, Canty, I saw your message, which are which are close to the chess club. Um oh man. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. Um, Ms. Shahadi said she confronted Mr. Ramirez in October of 2020 when he was set to serve as the commentator with her on the U.S. Junior Girls Championship. After telling the club, she said they told her to call him and deal with the matter. Wait, what? Wait, after telling the club, she said they told her to call him and deal with the matter? Uh... Uh, a double question mark. Yeah, this is where emotes. Uh... So she told the club about these incidents and they told her to call him and deal with the matter. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. A message reviewed by the journal shows she contacted him the day of the opening ceremony when he was included among the planned commentators. Oof. Ms. Shahadi said that during a phone call, Mr. Ramirez immediately agreed to step down from the commentary role that October. She also said he later called back and apologized for his behavior with her while alluding to other things that he regretted. Videos of the event show he didn't serve as a commentator at the tournament and was replaced by another grandmaster. In 2020, Ms. Shahadi said she also spoke with U.S. chess officials about Mr. Ramirez's alleged behavior. Ms. Shahadi has served as the Women's Program Director for U.S. Chess since 2018. In 2021, Greg Shahadi, Ms. Shahadi's brother, and a high-level player who organizes chess events, contacted St. Louis Chess Club and U.S. Chess to inform them of Mr. Ramirez's alleged behavior, according to emails reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. The email to the club included allegations involving girls as young as 15. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. Two months later, a letter came back from a lawyer representing the club, acknowledging that it had heard about the allegations in October 2020. The letter said they weren't aware of any inappropriate conduct by Mr. Ramirez. It further said that the club wasn't the proper party to review and investigate the matters he raised. In September of 2022, Mr. Ramirez played a featured role in a different scandal that rocked the world of elite chess when he conducted the explosive post-match interviews with players during a tournament in St. Louis when teenage grandmaster Hans Moke Neiman faced cheating allegations. This month, Ms. Shahadi and another player said they submitted complaints to the club and U.S. chess about their allegations. The players said that they had initial interviews with lawyers from the bodies but didn't hear back afterwards. Ms. Shahadi said she only heard back again after her tweet. Wow. So this is, this is yeah, a lot to unpack here. I mean, it, it, seems like, it seems like the powers that be had some inkling that things were going on at the very least as far back as like 2020, if not earlier, like 2016, 2017. So this is not, this, none, of this is, none of this is good. Um, 
Neither body publicly addressed the allegations until Ms. Shahadi's post in February. So, so, I mean, nobody knows exactly what's going on here behind the scenes. But if, if I read this, it should not take two plus years to run a full investigation. I mean, obviously we're in emote mode only so people can't write comments. But I mean, you can tell me a yay or a nay at least. But to me, when I read this, it seems to me that things were submitted in 2020 and it's only when this tweet and then the subsequent um, subsequent uh, comments from, from other, or not comments, but other stories from victims came out that this became an issue that was taken serious. I mean, I, I don't know if it takes two years to, uh, two years to do an investigation. Obviously there's a lot of, a lot of people you have to talk to and these sorts of things, but I, I don't know. I mean, as I'm reading this, the optics of this are very, very bad for, for all the parties involved. Um, Neither body publicly addressed the allegations until Ms. Shahadi's post in February. In December, yeah, I see the yeah, yeah, the yeahs are, are overwhelming. Um, in December, three months after the complaints, Mr. Ramirez was seen in photos on social media with women from the St. Louis University chess team in Mexico. The team was founded in 2016 as a partnership between the school and the St. Louis Chess Club. <laughs> Over the course of those years, Mr. Ramirez's alleged behavior became an increasingly open secret. People in the game said and caused some in the community to distance, him, dis distance themselves from him. Chess.com, the popular platform for the game that also hosts events, hasn't had a working relationship with Mr. Ramirez to write and play on the website since 2013, the company said, but internally agreed to not reconsider him for future work after first hearing about the allegations against him in 2019. Okay. Oof, 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 oof. Um, Mr. Shahad, Ms. Shahadi's experience with Mr. Ramirez ec echoed the behavior described by others who described... For one second. Yeah. Um, Ms. Shahadi, Ms. Shahadi's experience with Mr. Ramirez echoed the behavior described by others who described similar situations involving forced, unwanted advances and often alcohol. Claire Groth, who worked as a program manager at the World Chess Hall of Fame in St. Louis, said she said she met Mr. Ramirez at a 2014 reception organized by St. Louis Chess Club, which then spilled into an after party at a nearby Italian bar. Miss Gross said she found herself in conversation with him toward the back by the restroom. Oh my God. Ay -ay -ay. Oh man. Ugh. That's when she says that Mr. Ramirez grabbed her by the arm, pulled her into the restroom and pushed her up against a wall where he forcibly kissed her and reached into her halter neck dress to grope her breasts. Miss Gross said she was able to push him off and leave. Oh my gosh. Ay, ay, ay. The, the next day, Miss Gross was shocked when Mr. Ramirez appeared at her desk at the Hall of Fame. He asked her out on a date. <sighs> oh. This is so painful to read. This is unbelievable. This is actually just horrifying. <sighs> okay. Um, I was horrified at that point, Miss Gross says. She added that she told him that she was at work when she that he that she was at work and he went away, and that the incident led her to leave the Chess Hall of Fame later that year. Oh oof. man, yeah, this is this is bad. It was difficult for other players in Ramirez's orbit to avoid him. Younger players say that they had respect for him as a coach and noticed when such a well-connected grandmaster took an interest in them. <sighs> Mr. Ramirez is 23 in 2011, when a then 15-year-old player says she encountered him at a chess camp where he was an instructor. One night, she said he asked her if she could bring toothpaste to his room. This is wild. Yikes. Um... Oh, man. One night she said he asked if she could bring toothpaste to his room. Once there, he shoved her against the counter and began forcibly kissing her, even as she tried to turn her head away, she said. In subsequent messages to the girl reviewed by the journal, Mr. Ramirez wrote that he tricked her by asking for toothpaste. In their messages, he wrote about the kiss wanting to undress her and marrying her. He also made a reference to researching the age of consent in her home state. She said Mr. Ramirez assaulted her again when they were at tournaments over the following year, including one instance in which people were hanging out in a hotel room and everybody left but that. That's when she said he got on top of her, pinned her to the bed, and started kissing, groping, and attempting to undress her before she could escape. 
A sibling of her said that she shared the incidents contemporaneously. Two women also said Mr. Ramirez exploited shared living conditions, such as hotel rooms, <clears throat> saying they awoke in the middle of the night to Mr. Ramirez groping them. One of them said that it occurred multiple times, including once in a house operated by the St. Louis Chess Club. Oh, man. Another player said, says she was 16 when she traveled to a tournament with the U.S. chess team where Mr. Ramirez was one of the coaches. He was around 26 at the time. On the night of the closing ceremony, Mr. Ramirez invited her and at least one other underage girl to his hotel room for celebratory drinks before the party, the woman said. Mr. Ramirez allegedly provided them with vodka and encouraged them to drink. Later that night after the party, Mr. Ramirez led the 16-year-old back to his room, she said, and undressed her on, on his bed while she was visibly drunk. At that point, she says he attempted to have sex with her, but she refused. He then initiated oral sex when she said she wasn't in a position to consent to. <sighs> in subsequent years, she heard chatter that she hadn't been the only one on the receiving end of his unwanted advances. There was talk of him being a bit sleazy, messaging very young girls, she said. She also warned other players never to hang out with him one-on-one -on -one because he was a slimy person. When the woman, no longer competitive chess player, read Ms. Shahadi's post last month, she messaged her within five minutes. And that is the end of the article. It's written by Andrew Beaton and Joshua Robinson at the Wall Street Journal. Um, yeah, this is very distressing to hear. You know, I, I think in, in general terms, I will, I will give my, my five cents um, about what, I, what I'm familiar with. I'm not familiar with any of this stuff. This comes as a huge shock to me. I am aware that Alejandro was a bit of a playboy. He liked girls. Uh, but in terms of everything beyond that, I, have no, I had no knowledge of any of this. So this comes as a huge shock to me. Um, what does seem clear, however, is first of all, I think, you know, uh, you know, our thoughts have to be with the victims of all of this. First and foremost, the, the people who are the victims in this. Um, in terms of beyond that, I mean, what's this chess club in St. Louis knew or what um, or what uh, what the United States Chess Federation knew? It, it appears that this is something that has been known for a few years at the very least. Um, and who knows where this is going to lead beyond that. The, the one thing that, you know, again, obviously I'm not a lawyer, just like I'm not a um, what's I'm not a data scientist. But what's not clear to me is that it would appear that we're talking about things that could be criminal in nature, right? That this appears criminal. This is criminal in nature. Um, but the, the, the bodies that are, that are basically um, reviewing all this appear to be, uh, it's what's it not criminal, but civil, I guess, or something like that. If, if I understand it correctly, is that basically, um, basically like the chess club and the U S chess federation, these are not, they're not law enforcement, right? They're not law enforcement. These are, these are, um, I don't know if civil or what the word is, but nonetheless, um, they're not, it, it seems like what's being said here, it, I mean, if it's true, is just, I mean, isn't it just a crime? Um, if, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know what's going to happen with this, but yikes. Yikes. I mean, it, it looks like the, the club in some capacity must have known about this. I mean, how much they knew? I mean, that's anybody's guess. Um, how much does U.S. Chess Federation knew? Anybody's guess as well, but this looks really, really bad. Um, this look, this this looks really, 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 really bad for for all. I mean, for for all parties involved. Like I said, first and foremost, though, I mean, our thoughts have to go out to the victims for, first and foremost, because these are the people who who you know were abused and, and things and, and all and all these other things. So, oof. I don't know. Is it incompetence? I mean, is it incompetence? Is it is it knowledge and not doing anything? Who who really knows? But oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, when, when I see this, the only thing I can think of is like I'm thinking of the the, the L word, the, the the L word that that nobody wants to uh, wants to say. Uh, do I think Fabiano and Christian knew about this? I mean, I I'm gonna assume they didn't know about this. I'm assume that I'm gonna assume that probably like me, the the extent of what they probably knew. Um, the extent of what they probably knew is the same as me. Like I, I've said, as I said before, like I've known Alejandro for many, many years. I probably know, I've known Alejandro for the better part of, I'm going to say roughly give or take 20 years. And I was not aware of any of this. Um, but I was aware of the fact that Alejandro pretty much likes, likes, you know, every girl that every girl that he's around, but I didn't know that it went beyond that. And obviously this is just, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, unacceptable doesn't even seem to do it, do justice to what's going on. Um, in the situation. So I think, I think we're going to see, um, 
yeah, we're, we're going to see what happens with the, uh, you know, in, in regards to the chess club, to USCF, Alejandro. I mean, I, uh, clearly Alejandro's involvement with the club, the university and everything else is, I think, finished. I don't think there's any any doubt about that. Um, but beyond that, we'll see whether it becomes something criminal or not. Who knows? FBI coming in now. I mean, who who knows? Who knows? Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just it's horrifying to hear about this. I think, you know, the one thing that I would reiterate and this doesn't just apply to this situation this applies to other matters which are very relevant in this modern time which is the governing bodies have to look at these issues and there have to be ways for people to come forward and talk about these sorts of things um where they take it seriously and it's not you know not potentially brushed under the rug so again we'll, we'll see what happens but this is uh this is very very um very shocking very very shocking um that that it got us considering you see stuff being said here from like 2016 2017 who knows you know like even what jennifer says in here i think it's from like 2013 or 2014 um but overall implications are um well i mean the 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 overall implications are alejandro is probably not gonna have anything to do with the chess world if i had to guess going forward i mean whether it becomes something criminal or not that's that's who, who knows who knows what's what's going on but it sounds i mean it sounds really really bad i mean especially when you see the thing about when we see the thing where it says that he was Googling age of consent, I, I don't even remember where that was in here, but it says that he was Googling age of consent. Like, yeah, I, I yeah, it's, yeah, I, I, I really don't know what to say on this. It's just, it's very, very bad for everyone involved, but I just hope that the people who had to deal with this, um, the, the victims in this case, you know, that they're, they're able to move past this, um, you know, and live their lives. And, you know, it, it doesn't become like a lifelong trauma or something that affects them forever. I, I think that's all that I really, that's all that I really can say, honestly. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is an article in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it was published this morning. And I'm assuming that it's, you know, again, it's going to be something that, that circulates on, um, on, on social media. And we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll see, um, we'll see, we'll see, see what happens. But very, uh, very, 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 shocking upsetting i mean i'm still kind of processing this because again knowing what the chess world is like there had to be certain parts of the world that knew knew about things that were uh were going on i just it just seems like that um yeah all right you guys so that's our first article we're going to cover i mean bleh i mean there, there are many one words you can use but this also i will say separately this is another instance of i think you know there, there are a lot of times that uh we as males and I'll, I'll speak for myself as well as others you know like we, we we do feel like in general when you look at the chess world the females are outnumbered by something like i'm gonna say 10 to 1 past a certain rating range and when you see things like this if, if these sorts of things happen that is not making chess more inclusive for females if anything it's making it so they're less and less likely to stay in this world if there are potentially predators out there so yeah, I mean, these sorts of things, I think if, if, if chess is a Me Too movement, I mean, that, that might be a good thing. You, you, never, you never know. So it's just horrible, though. It's, it's horrible at any rate. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope that, again, for the victims, they're able to move past it. But, yeah, the, this article is, 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 is something not reading it. I mean, the Wall Street Journal published this. So you have to assume that this is based on, they say documents that they've read, text messages they've read. I mean... If it's not, I mean, frankly, someone could sue the Wall Street Journal, right? I mean, just saying. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, let's move on from this article. We're going to keep, keep, keep moving forward. Um, as, but this is very, uh, very, 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 very um, upsetting to see. Moving on, um, let's keep going. We have another article that we're going to cover as well now. We're going to keep moving, moving along with the articles. We have an article that is from this past weekend from, uh, let, me, let me adjust this a little bit, from the Boston, the MIT Sloan Sports Analyst Conference, which was held in Boston. And now, as you guys can see from this picture, of course, this, there is Fabiano right here. There's Jennifer right here. I'm in the middle. This is Daryl Morey and Mr. Dan, Daniel Wrench, the CCO of Chess.com. Um, WSJ wouldn't carelessly put this out. Yeah. Um, all right, so here we keep going. The game should be willing to adjust. Caruana, Nakamura, and Shahadi talk at MIT. This is an article by Peter Doggers from yesterday. On Friday, top GMs Fabiano Caruana and Hikaru Nakamura, as well as women's grandmaster Jennifer Shahadi, took part in a panel discussion at the MIT Sloan Sports School of Management's annual sports analytics conference in Boston. The three talked about the further growth of the game of chess together with Daryl Morey, the president of basketball operations at the Philadelphia 76ers, and host I am Danny Wrench, the chief chess officer at chess.com. 
It was the fifth time that chess.com was present at the conference, but never before during a time when there was so much interest in the game titled The Chess Renaissance, Modern Challenges for an Ancient Game. The panel discussion was broadcast live on YouTube. You can watch it here starting at 9.26.58. Below is a selection of quotes from the discussion, which includes topics such as cheating, new playing formats, and the future of chess. On cheating, Nakamura, I think that going forward, we're probably going to keep hearing more and more about such topics. I think now that it's out there, it does need to be taken seriously by the governing bodies, and we'll see where it goes. I think that certainly the game will be better off because of the fact that people are aware of it and we we will treat it like a serious issue. Okay, so this is the, I think they take, uh, so this is the first topic about cheating, obviously, very relevant topic as well that everyone is, is uh, wondering about. And here is Fabiano's response. How is it to play against someone whom you think is cheating? Um, Fabiano says, that's one of the biggest problems with online chess, especially. And this is a problem that became known to the outside world following the whole Magnus Carlsen against Hans Moke Neiman scandal. But before that, it was festering beneath the surface for a lot of players, I think, at many levels of chess. Now, this is also something, again, to mention, um, to mention as well. This is another topic where there has to be a mechanism for players to express their concerns to the governing body where it is taken seriously and not a matter where it's like, okay, you're just making up things, you're saying these things. It needs to be taken seriously. As I alluded to very recently in one of my YouTube videos where I covered an article on cheating, I have heard, um, I have heard from parents here in the United States about what they say basically is just cheating straight up over the board that is not being addressed by organizers. So this is a very, very serious issue. Um, and it needs to keep being taken seriously. Or not keep being taken, it needs to be taken seriously, I should say. Um, but before that, it was festering beneath the surface for a lot of players, and I think at many levels of chess. From beginning levels, this is something that affects online play up to the very top level. Even if it maybe wasn't there, the, suspicious and the, the suspicions and the paranoia were there. Organizers, in large part, turned a blind eye to it because it's very difficult and un an uncomfortable problem, and a problem that doesn't even have a clear solution if it has one at all. So many organizers just prefer not to address it, which is in some way why it was a good thing that now people are forced to address it. And organizations, the people responsible for chess, are now forced to address it because the public wants answers, or at the least, wanted answers. Okay, here's a picture of Fabiano looking very dapper as usual. That being said, from the point of view of someone who thinks they're being cheated against, even if you're not, it really dramatically lowers your level because it gets in your head. You don't know if you're playing against a real opponent where you can deal with the normal psychological thing or if you're playing against someone or something that will beat you no matter what. Exactly. Okay. How has the chess world dealt with the scandal? Daryl Morey, general manager of the Philadelphia 76ers. Chess has generally been ahead. There were the, they were the first to use computers in a significant way in their sport. They were the first to do systematic cheat detection in their sport. You were sort of late to a scandal that was on the front page. Um, and again, this is in real time, so, the, so it's going to be a little bit janky, just to be clear, because I think they're literally taking this directly. But Daryl Morey saying, chess was, chess was, we were sort of late to a scandal that was on the front page of every single newspaper. A lot of times when scandals happen, the mistakes happen early. I know enough about cheat detection. I knew you couldn't tell if someone was cheating just from one game. I knew some background that he had cheated online. I felt it was behooved that you need to still presume innocent until guilty in an over-the-board situation and let it play out. If someone is cheating, eventually they'll be discovered. Just like in any other sport, there have been steroid scandals. There's been doping scandals. There's been everything. Eventually, these people are found out. It's better to let them hang themselves than to jump the gun. But I feel like the chess community got it right eventually. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Ooh, who's this guy? Streaming a podcast, Nakamura. It's very hard to know whether it was because of the circumstance with COVID. Thank you so much. Um, it's very hard to know whether it was because of a circumstance with COVID and what was happening in 2020. That sort of changed the world of chess, being able to stream and create content, or whether it would have happened anyway. First of all, I first started playing chess on the internet in the late 1990s. There was a site called the Internet Chess Club. I would actually play games and write out comments. It's called Kibitzing. Oh, thank you so much to Peshkak for the raid. Thank you. Um, Of course, these days I actually talk. I don't type, so it's a little bit different, but I think it was a long time coming. Certainly, there are so many people who love chess, and being able to share that, you can't really do it when you're simply competing. What has happened with myself and some other creators like Gotham Chess, the Bow Test Sisters, it's just amazing that we're able to share the game with so many more people in a way that we weren't 
even 10 years ago. Very true. Well said by this guy. Um, so here we go. Fabiano. I think one of the reasons chess became uh, middle seat equals main character. I guess something like that. I'm reading my own quote. Exactly. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> Um, Carwana. I think one of the reasons chess became even more popular, and obviously there was an explosion of popularity, but one of the great things that chess fans can learn about chess from is there's a lot of ways to hear the thoughts of top players. If you're a newcomer to chess in a way that wasn't, or there, there are a lot of thoughts you can hear for chess players. If you're a newcomer to chess in a way that wasn't possible, let's say going back 20 or 30 years, you can hear in real time about the thoughts of top players and their thought processes during the game. So that's a very special thing. That's one of the ways in which technology has brought chess to every level, not just the top level, but for beginners as well. And that's actually a very good point from Fabiano here, because when you think about the way that I'm able to broadcast you guys today, this is something that was not available if you go back 20 years. It was just not possible. Um, now, of course, for me, like when I talk about the topic, you know, there is a difference because obviously I'm talking versus typing nonstop, but you're still using your head. So it's just a matter of typing versus speaking. And um, so I think for me, the fact that I had that experience really, really was beneficial uh, because it's just you're still using the brain, but you're just changing it to speaking versus typing. Um, as far as what Fabiano says here, this is also a very good point that in, in the past, if you think about it, just look at myself or Magnus Carlson. Is there any world where Gary Kasparov would be on the internet or like talking and you could actually hear him explain things? You never could, you never could hear that in the past. Um, if anything, it would be Gary asking for $50,000 to show up and sign some stuff, play a simul, and that was the extent of it. But as a player or even just a fan, what do you get out of that? You get absolutely zero. Sure, you have the opportunity to play against Gary Chess, the founder of Chess and one of the greatest of all time, but you don't actually get anything. There's no way to help you improve or even just enjoy the game. It's just one game that you get to play. So, um, so let's keep going. Uh, so, so this was Fabiano, what Fabiano said. Um, and, and I think he's, he's absolutely right that now in real time, you can hear what we're saying. Of course, there are many of us doing this. And of course, there are many different audience that, audiences that really enjoy it. And now we keep going. Will chess continue to grow? Nakamura, I think chess will continue to grow. One of the big differences between chess versus, let's say, a lot of esports or games, and this specifically applies to YouTube, is that most games have changed. They have, they have put or bad they have patches bugs and all these other things so when a game changes if you watch fortnite from say 2018 or 2019 when ninja was playing and he had this big rise you can watch the videos but they're antiquated if you, or i should keep reading exactly what i said but now if you go on youtube and you watch a video of ninja playing fortnite from that time period the video is completely irrelevant there's nothing about it that is still applicable to the game today and i'll give you another example so like when i look at fortnite because there are obviously people who watch fortnite here i remember watching tfue maybe about like two years ago, two and a half years ago. And um, while that guy's smart, I remember Tifu, Tifu and Cloaksy, they'd always land out in like frosty plains or somewhere was frozen. And there were these balls they'd get in and go across the whole whole entire map. But of course, if I go to YouTube now and I watch a Tifu video where they where they land there and they get in these balls and they, they have mobility, it's like completely irrelevant. Because of course, if I land there now, there's nothing even remotely comparable. So that's just the, the modern day comparison for anybody who's wondering. Um, so, all right. Um, with chess, say there's a video of me from 2017 that's still relevant even today. The fact that chess is very, very much an evergreen game, you can watch a video now or in 10 years from now, and it will be the same. This is a big advantage chess has over just about any other game. Really, it was frosty flights, and you jump, jump in those balls, and you just go across the map. But it's true, you guys. If you if you look at these games like League of Legends, Fortnite. Apex, I'm a little bit less familiar with, but you look at them, they're big changes to the game. And so the videos that you watch are not relevant. Um, so this, this is actually very true. This is why chess does so, so well. And like, even in, even in like 30 years when, you know, Levy and I are long gone, um, people will still be watching our videos and they will still matter. Like, yes, they'll be, they'll be old in a way, but you know, if I have a video on the King's Gambit or Levy has a video on the Vienna or whatever, they will still be relevant. They'll still be relevant in 30 years. There's no disputing that unless of course, chess two comes out and we play a different game. Um, so let's keep going. Uh, does chess need to change in terms of time controls? Tiebreak formats, chess 960. Fabiano says, this is the reason why Magus is essentially not playing the next world championship because he doesn't like the format. But that might be purely for personal reasons, just because he doesn't like all the preparation that goes into it and the amount of time and stress that he has to put into it. But I think there's a place for bullet chess for 30 second chess up until the long classical one game a day matches that were historically that were used historically. First of all, I think Andrew Tang needs to check his PayPal because, or, or not Andrew Tang, sorry. I think Fabiano needs to check his PayPal because this feels like something that Andrew Tang would have 100% told him to say. It's like, there's a place for bullet chess, a place for 30 second chess. So I think Fabiano was clearly a paid actor and Andrew Andrew was giving him some money to say that. Um, 
I think where the interest comes in is mostly in the stakes. Nobody is going to watch a. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys like. I mean, that just says totally an Andrew Tang. He's like, he's like, yo, Fabiano, just mentioned like bullet chess and thirty second chess. Maybe it'll gain some traction. That'll, that'll be better for me. Um, I think where the interest comes in is mostly in the stakes. Nobody is going to watch a one game a day match if there's nothing at stake. But if it's a world championship, if there's a lot of money and prestige and the historical relevance of the players both invested in the match and everyone, whoa, everyone is very interested. We see that the world championship consistently pulls the biggest numbers in terms of viewership because people want to find out who is the next world champion. A uh, quick station break, but big shout out to this great Twitch channel and site called Chess, which has really reinvigorated this game. Uh, thank you so much for the 57 gifted subs. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so this is a, there. There are a couple things that we're gonna unpack. I think I think I want to get to the end of the article before I unpack exactly what this means uh, about formats. But we'll read the other comps. So right here from Jennifer, we have this comment. Jennifer says, "I think there's absolutely room for everything because of the growth of Chess. I think that really helps to motivate people." Um, I think that that really helps motivate people that there's different ways that they can succeed in chess. Some people can be really good at blitz, rapid, classical. Of course, we're talking about professional levels, but even for an amateur level player, the fact that you might be terrible at bullet, but you're really good at bug house or really good at puzzles. And this is also true because I'll give you another example. Somebody who's really good at puzzles and banks mad money every single year, he gets like $8,000, is this grandmaster from St. Louis, Missouri, Ray Robson. And, you know, he doesn't need to do anything. He can just sit around, study a few puzzles. And um, he just goes and grabs his cheddar whenever we have the yearly, um, yearly puzzle rush championship. So this is very true. This idea that you can be a content creator, even if you're not good, at, not that good at chess, that there's different ways to be good at chess, I think is really powerful. Also true, of course. Here we keep going. How to keep the boom going. Some guy, Hikaru, says. There's also the big elephant in the room, which isn't addressed, which is the fact that when we're talking about going mainstream with chess or success, a lot of it has to do with what the prize funds are, how much money people earn as professional chess players. When you look at it from that, from the context of trying to bring more money into the game, it's all about the audience. As I've said many times before, the one thing that matters more than anything is this thing. The eyeballs on your stream, on your YouTube videos, uh, on your Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, etc. That is what matters in this modern world. Who will stop? If you get that following, that matters more than almost anything else. Um, I mean, a case in point, obviously, to use a very clear example, is look at this guy called Levy Ross. He's an IM. He's a good IM. He is doing better than the ch world chess champion. He's doing better than the world chess champion Magnus Carlsen from a financial standpoint. Let that sink in for a second. That says it all right there. Um, so let's keep going. Um, uh, what, what, what does the audience want to see? In this modern world, eyeballs drive everything. Because of that, I think the formats that are relatively shorter are going to attract sponsors and viewers much more than longer formats. I think it's only going to keep moving in that direction. That's not shade, actually. No, if anything, that's shade. That's more shade on the chess world as a whole. That's not shade on Levy at all. I mean, I, I know you guys want want to like turn it into something like that, but that's not the point at all. Um. Maury, the World Chess Championship drives the most interest, but it probably has the worst structure of any world championship of any sport you can ever envision. Not only are we talking about the timing being wrong, Golden State would have won 12 straight titles because it would be like everyone, everyone fights and then they only play against Golden State. Now, this is not far from the truth because it's basically saying that if Golden State wins the NBA title, uh, title they're seeded into the finals and everybody else, else has to play each other to get there, um, which is what the chess world is actually like right now. Um, uh... Then you play 12 games. Everyone would like to see exciting things, like three, but 12. The entire structure of the World Championship is designed to make people less interested. You should have a bracket. Everyone loves brackets. Now, I'm not sure that I actually agree with this concept of brackets, but again, I'll wait till, I think this is the end of the article almost. I'll, I'll talk about this in a second about the formats. Um, or no, maybe I'll jump into it right now because we're at this point in the article. So, you know, when people talk about, like what I just said about Levy, for example, there's there's nothing wrong with that from a general standpoint, but it says a lot about the game of chess, the governing bodies, the organizations that are putting money, trying to get sponsors, that this happens. Because if you look at normal sports, and I'll use NBA as a better example. If you look at the NBA, you have Shaquille O'Neal, who is a great commentator, very smart guy. Um, and I think they said that his, his contract on TNT is something like $10 million a year. Now, that is more than a lot of players in the NBA, make no mistake about it, but that is still nowhere near what the top players in the NBA are making. Players like, uh, players like um, uh, LeBron James, 
uh, and, you know, Luka Doncic, all those other guys, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is you have these commentators doing very well, better than probably some percentage, but they are not doing better than the absolute top players in the NBA. And I think that probably also applies to other sports too um, at the end of the day. So when I say that, it's not about Levy or, you know, myself or Botez or any of them. It's about the fact that the people who are supposed to be you know, raising awareness, getting more sponsors, getting this interest involved, they're not able to do it. Now, of course, chess.com has done that to some degree, but I still think that at the end of the day, chess.com is just one site. So LeBron James, yes, exactly. Um, and so when I talk about this, because I saw people on Twitter actually were saying, there were some people on Twitter who were saying, well, Hikaru's just saying this because like he wants Rapid and Blitz because it gives him a better chance to become the world champion. Um, something along the, along those lines. That's not actually the reason that I say that. The, the, reason that I, the, reason, the reason that I say that is because at the end of the day, for me, the one thing that, that I do find very sad, maybe sad's the wrong word, maybe the one kind of big, one of the big regrets I have about the whole boom that's occurred is that in general, it has not benefited the top players for the most part. The top players have not, um, have not really seen any increase in their earnings. And if, if there are more eyeballs regardless of the format and there's more money in, it is going to help the, the income. The players are going to make more money at the end of the day. So that, that is the, the one thing that I will say specifically about it because I know there are people saying, well, he's just saying that because he wants to be world champion, which is not the actual reason that I'm saying that I really do wish there was more money I wish that players you know that you do have the chess champions tour but you don't have more money coming into the game relative to what has happened in the last three years I mean that's not to say like you know people like Levy or myself we don't work extremely hard but I still feel that to some degree it is a big pity that top players are not making more money overall they're making a little bit more but you know if you had players who are 2700 making significantly more money that would be fantastic because to get to 2700 you have to work extremely hard um, and that's still not good enough. Traditional sports have more revenue streams. I'm not trying to say that chess should be like football or basketball. Of course, chess will never get to those levels. I mean, we assume it won't. I mean, we never know, of course. But still, it feels like considering the number of eyeballs people are watching, it feels like um, it, it feels it feels like there should be there should be more money. And I, I don't know where the blame. Where, I mean, blame maybe is wrong, but I don't. I mean, it has not happened. But let's just let's just put it like that. Um, so that, that is my answer to the people who are saying, well, I'm, you know, Hikaru's just saying this because he wants to be bl blitz and rap because then he can win. It's like, that's not actually the reason I'm saying it. Like, I, I, I don't care whatsoever. Um, but at the end of the day, if the, I'll, I'll say this, if you, if you could have a world championship, um, that if, if you could have like, if you could have, let's just not say world championship, but you have like chess boxing where you have 300,000 people concurrently watching. If you could have matches that have 300,000 people watching, you better believe if you can show 300 K, you will get sponsors. Full stop. You will get sponsors. End of story. End of story. Full stop. Um, so it does matter how many viewers are watching these events. And you can say, sure, well, you know, you can keep, you know, you're ruining the tradition or the history or whatever. But if, you know, if people want to watch it, that means more money for the players. That's a good thing. That's always going to be a good thing if there's more money for the top players, people who've dedicated their lives to the game. So when people try to say that it's like, you know, ruining tradition, sure, if you want people to not make, make more money or you want them to not benefit off of the boom, fine. But at the end of the day, like, it, it is a good thing if there's more money. It's a good thing for all the top players. End of story. Um, so, okay, here we go with my quote where I say, you have this cultural thing where because you have tradition of having a classical world champion with this format for like 100 plus years now, people don't want to change or the governing bodies don't want to change that format. Again, it comes down to the practical nature of making changes versus keeping things the same. I think at the end of the day, though, if you want the game to grow, if you want more people watching, you also want the professionals to earn more money, change should be happening. Hmm. Didn't I just say that same thing? Oh, wait, this is actually my quote. What a surprise. Um, okay. <laughs> this is exactly what I just said. But a lot of people are like, no, he's just saying he wants he wants to win more. He wants to be world champion or all this stupid, stupid nonsense. But that's, of course, not the actual answer. Daryl Morey says, playoff formats change constantly. Different number of games, different number of teams. The only sport that, that win are the ones that are reaching to their audience and making changes the rules, making changes to the structure such that drive interest, drive revenue, which drives better players. It all becomes a virtuous cycle. Very true, of course, because, you know, I have to say I'm a bit of an old school guy. Like I followed basketball, now to, now to switch back to basketball. I followed basketball in the 1990s. I got to be honest. I love the New York Knicks. I loved it when Anthony Mason or Charles Oakley, you know, guy drives lane, you flatten him. You just, you just knock him down. You know, old, old school basketball. I love that. And like, I have to be honest, when I watch, like when I watch Steph Curry or Seth Curry or any of them just literally put up three balls, like it's, you know, like there's no tomorrow. Tomorrow, it annoys me. I don't like it. But at the end of the day, it does make the teams better. And mathematically, it makes more sense to shoot three balls than to, you know, to go for layups and drive, drive down the lane and get, get alley-oops or get, um, you know, get fouled in the paint. So anyway, this is very true, though, that, that it has changed. And it, it is for the better. Fans like it more. Fans like it when Steph Curry just, you know, he shoots these, these half-court three balls and they go in like 50% of the time. 
So, all right. Um, what it, it, which drive, it becomes a virtuous cycle. Right now at the classical chess world championship level, they've got a vicious cycle that's working in the anti way. It's less interesting than any other format of chess. Now you have the best players not even wanting to play. Now, this is the other thing, and this, this I have to say about classical chess. I don't think that for classical chess, the reason that it, people don't like it is necessarily the fault of any organization. I think ultimately the, the you know, classical chess is a victim of technology, frankly. Uh, be, due to technology, computer programs becoming so good. Actually, no, you know who you want to blame for this? You should blame IBM and Deep Blue. Blame them for, for, for where classical chess is today because technology has just moved at such a fast pace that it's so easy to prepare now and you prepare so deep in so many different openings that it's just not very interesting. The games tend to be more boring and you get more and more draws. Shame on you, IBM. Yes, shame on IBM, right? I agree. Um, no, but, but then if you want to take a step further, it's not shame on IBM. You say shame on Gary Chess because it's all Gary's fault that he, he wanted to play these matches against these computer programs for big money. Cause that, that meant these companies developed the machine. They developed the engines. They got better and better to this point. So yeah, you, you blame Gary, blame IBM, blame whoever you want. Um, obviously no one can see forward into the future, but it is what it is. So it's like really the classical chess is a victim of technology more than anything else. Um, can you think of a bigger failure of a sport than when you have the best player who doesn't want to play to try and win? I've never heard anything like that. And now we have Fabiano saying, we don't need, we don't need to speculate about the knockout format because we had a knockout format for years and nobody liked it. We had world champions from, I think, 1996 to 2004 in terms of the knockout format, and nobody cared who the champion was. Now, that, of course, is because Gary Kasparov had broken away, which is a big part of this. Um, Maury, because it didn't have the history is my guess. Wrench. Maybe they didn't care at the time. The audience wasn't what it is now. It also was never presented in the same way that the classical world championship was. As the audience changes and we learn what they want, the game should be willing to adjust. Of course, very, very true. Um, then we get this, this next topic, which I, I love the answers here. The, this, this response from Daryl Morey to what Danny said is really good. So Danny Wrench said, when will chess be ready to sell out arenas with live tickets for fans? Hikaru says, or Nakamura says, I think it involves the right personality, certainly. If we're, if we're talking about the professional, I think we're still quite a ways off from that. I think we're going to need to see a new generation of kids rise to the top. If we're talking more like influ influencers, similar to what happened with chess boxing, courtesy of Ludwig, I think that could happen almost tomorrow with the right influencers, for sure. For me specifically, when I was growing up playing professionally, it's really all about myself. This is myself against the other competitors. There aren't fans that are watching in person. Even online, frankly, there, there wasn't really a fan base. So when I stream now, I feel like there's a big community. It, do, it does almost feel like I'm, I am competing, and I do have the support from the fans in a way there never existed at any other time in my chess career. So of course, it's where we say, knock us army, obviously, in honor of Arnie, Arnold, Arnold Palmer. For me, I think that's why when you look at the future, if you have fans, if you have like 150,000 people watching Magnus and myself playing in the Speed Chess Championship match last December, that is the future. That's much more important than selling out arenas. And I do agree with this because I said it. Daryl Morey says that's 10 arenas. So we keep going. Is chess ever going to be stale? Fabiano says, we've been hearing about the death of chess for decades. Danny says it has been greatly exaggerated. Fabiano says, yeah, it hasn't happened. I think we found that although computers got super strong and now can beat humans all the time, it doesn't really change the human element, which is what people really want to see. They want to see the mistakes. They don't want to see perfect chess. They want to see the clash of personalities as well. They want to see their favorite chess player, not just because it's the best chess player, but also because they like how the person talks or presents themselves. So it's not just about the chess play. We really need to see personalities in chess. And I think that's what has developed in recent years. Uh, I mean, the openings can be still, I mean, in general, I like, I kind of think that, yeah, this is, I mean, the, 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 the problem with classical chess, as I said, is that technology leads to games getting deeper and deeper before anyone has to make critical decisions. And when that happens, the players are so good now that generally they won't make mistakes that are big enough in order to lose the games, which means that you have a lot of games that end in ties. And you do have ties in soccer. I don't know if they allude to it here. You do have ties in soccer, of course, um, but you don't have every game ending like that. And generally... It's, it's just very difficult to watch beyond like one or two days, especially when the games go like four or five hours at least. Okay. Um, this is one of the issues now with analyzing chess, which is that very often you get an evaluation that shows 0.00, which means the position the computer evaluates is objectively drawn. And this is completely unhelpful in analysis because it doesn't take into effect the human element and the psychological element and how people make mistakes. So it doesn't matter if the position is effectively won, 
lost or drawn because it's more about the difficulty of the moves for both sides that's one of the more difficult sides of analyzing chess now that you have these computers that have become a little bit too strong also true and a good example of that would be this game that I played against D Gukesh from India in the chess champions tour where the computer said he should push some pawns on the edge of the board and he was much better if not winning in the long term but of course as humans we couldn't really understand the plans and my plan was easier to follow up on than his was and I won the game very smoothly final thoughts on growing the game Caruana I think Caruana I think it has its own momentum now it might carry itself I do think there is space for similar to how the chess boxing was presented if you get the right people behind it people who can bring those fans from other esports into chess then you could get a really good live event going Daryl Morey there's been a there's been sort of a narrow set of sponsors people who support chess it seems it still needs to have to broaden out so that it's across all the categories like the NBA has we have a broad base of sponsors TV money everything that sort of perpetuates everything also true and this is why again getting back to the point that I was making earlier for all the people on Twitter who are busy that I'm saying saying that I just want I want blitz and rap because it's going to be better for me to like become world champion or whatever the reality is is that more money is going to be a good thing you more fans more money it's good for everybody bottom line um on attracting more women and this of course is a very hot topic considering this previous article we just read Danny says the female user base is still under 30 percent so we want to drastically increase that but it's higher than it's ever been now hot take I'm going to say that online it's probably it's probably up to 30 percent because even though there is harassment and I'll just say that outright there is harassment of course of females and we've seen it we've seen posts on Reddit and elsewhere it's not the same as in person having to deal with it non-stop which is why the user base is even 30 percent whereas I think over the board at, at actual terms in person it's probably like 10 percent or less um and that's still still not great but it's 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 going somewhere shahadi says it's great and really exciting and heartwarming to hear about all the percentages of females on chess.com skyrocketing but let's be honest there's still a lot of underrepresentation of women especially when it comes to leadership in chess to chess coaches to chess authors i think if we improve that the numbers are going to explode and that is one beautiful thing about chess that it crosses gender and age boundaries that you can have people competing of all different types i think we really need to lean into that more lgbtq plus representation in chess can certainly be improved a lot especially at the international level where sometimes events are held in places where there aren't good human rights for members of the LGBTQ plus community I think those are some areas I'd really love to see chess grow into of course bigger base obviously better for everyone once again okay and then we have this final little paragraph says the goal of the MIT Sloan annual sports analytics conference is to provide a forum for industry professionals executives and leading researchers and students to discuss the increasing role of analytics in the global sports industry MIT Sloan is dedicated to fostering growth and innovation in this arena and the conference enriches opportunities for learning about the sports business world the conference is open to anyone interested in sports founded by Daryl Morey who went to MIT Sloan graduated in 2000 and Jessica Gelman who went to HB HBS I'm not sure what HBS is in 2006 the conference is shared by Gelman and Mori and organized by the MIT Sloan students so this is the second article article to cover um once again I think it's very important to note that the biggest issue with classical chess is the games are too long you don't have winners and that hurts if you could if you could tell me I'll, I'll give another hot take just briefly before we close it down for this article um if you give me another if I give you another hot take I'll tell you this if the classical world championship was 12 games but but you could guarantee me that eight of the games would be decisive let's just say eight out of 12 so uh, so 75 percent of the games were going to be decisive I bet a lot of people would watch it they would really enjoy it if you could guarantee that 75 percent of the games were going to be were going to be decisive and have a winner I think I think people would love it and it would be great but you of course can't ensure that you have decisive results that's the problem the draw before move 30 changes nothing whatsoever but if, if you could tell me like if you could if you could, if you could tell me that like if you, if you tell me that like that like 75 percent of the games were going to be or sorry that's eight out of 12 no it's three quarters isn't it or can I not do math um or not uh that's two oh no that's two thirds I'm an idiot you're right sorry that's not three fourths I'm an idiot uh I can't do math but anyway yeah if you if, if you could tell yeah math is hard right if, if you could tell me that like that 66.666 repeating percent of games were going to be decisive I think everybody would watch it. I really do believe that I think everybody would love it if the games went four or five hours it wouldn't even matter if you could guarantee that there were going to be that many decisive games but of course you can't guarantee it and honestly even this upcoming match if the players want to be rock solid which I think is what's going to happen you're going to have a lot of draws that's just the reality at the end of the day. it's okay you're not a data scientist I agree um you can't really count draws as two-thirds of a win for black because that's unfair to the player with white who's tried really hard to prepare really well you can't you can't really do that either that's the problem 
So there's really no good, there's no good answer to it. I mean, I think at the end of the day, like as far as classical goes, you can't really necessarily blame FIDE per se for, for the reasons that classical chess is declining. It's just that technology has made it so that everyone knows they're opening super, super well. And, you know, another good example, which I will t show you guys as well, is um, getting back to my chess scene now. Um, it's like I, I told you guys that, like, I, I played this, uh, let, me, let me do, let me just click on a game randomly to open it up. Um, it's like, you know, I, I started playing this, this silly opening recently, like title Tuesday, this Balrog opening. And now of course I almost can't play it in title Tuesday because everyone and their brother has suddenly studied this opening. I played this guy, Amin, a GM from Iran, probably spent like five hours wasting his life studying the stupid opening. And now I just can't play it anymore. And that's simply the reality of chess. That's just, that's just how it is. Everyone, everyone prepares so much. And because computers are so strong, you can really know what you're doing as every opening. That's just the reality. So I don't, I mean, classical chess is ultimately a victim of technology. But I do think changes need to be made for, for rapid chess, blitz chess, all these things, maybe even like slow rapid where you have 60 minutes for the whole game, things of that nature, because you need mistakes, you need decisive results. That's when it, that's what's going to lead to more sponsors, more interest, period, which is good for everybody. Plain and simple. That's 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 how it goes. That's all you have to do. Um, so for people who want tradition, yeah, but again, at the end of the day, more more players, more money for everybody, that's what you want. That's what you want. Thanks so much to Bortnik Chess for the raid with 195. Now I'm gonna put the music back on. And I think we're going to keep, uh, keep rolling. Yeah, let, let's, let's keep rolling. Let me put the music back on and off we go. Let me change the song and let's, let's play some Blitz now. Okay, who's online? Let's find some games. Um, players, all players, Blitz. Maximus is online. Let's or Nihal's online too. Let's challenge Nihal to some Blitz. Um, okay, who's, who's playing? Okay, let's see. Nihal is playing. Maxime. Maxime is online. There are a lot of good players online to play against. Thanks for covering the Wall Street Journal earlier. I know it was difficult, but really important. Um, it's shocking. I mean, remains to be seen. Who knows what? But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's shocking. It's shocking. And I don't even know what else to say. I mean, I, I, like, even saying shocking, I don't think really does it justice. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I would, I would assume it's probably going to be investigated by other authorities. I mean, based on what was published, but we'll see. Nobody knows. We'll see. Who won the first title Tuesday? Not me. I think Fedos say I've won it. So. Mm -hmm. We'll do Reddit a little bit later. I want to play some Blitz right now. I'm in the mood to play some Blitz. Even if I lose rating points, I, I just want to play chess. So thank you so much to Erasmus for the three months. Thank you so much to Electra for the two. Gen Daddy, thank you to Virtual Vicar. Thank you to Anita Drink. Uh, Mendy, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much to AKD for the 26. Thank you so much to Tranks, Chillos, DMC Dash with the Prime, Frizzle Link with the Prime, What is Faction with the Prime, Chess Player B with the Tier 1, Goofy Goof Goof Barry. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So I'm just sending out challenges to everybody. I just want to play Blitz. The bottom line. I'll hold you to what? Hold me to what? I don't know what you mean. If I come down to South Florida, would you play a round of golf? Um, it's a thought. Okay, I have eight challenges out. Somebody's got to want to play Blitz. If nobody wants to play Blitz, I'm going to lose my mind. I really don't want to do an arena. I want to play Blitz. I really want to play Blitz right now. Nine challenges. Somebody's got to want to play Blitz. Use an alt. I mean, I could do Disrespect Speed Run. I could also play some of the bots. Robert Hess is on. Let's challenge him. Because you can't spell chess without Hess. Yay! Thank you so much for Friday, sir, for the four months. For sure. Just took five oh, come on. Somebody's got to want to play some Blitz. This is ridiculous. Great content. Learned a lot from you. I mean, I could. I just need to get the time. I need, need to get what the timestamp is so I can start it um, with the, with the timestamp. Oh, I challenged Hess. Come on. Somebody's got to want to play. This is insane. How can I not get a game? I'm challenging people at 2,800 now. Yeah, I can't get a game. This is really annoying. All right, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna log in with the disrespect one, and we're I'm gonna try to. Uh, I think I'm gonna try to start the disrespect speed run. So give me one second while I open the timer, and I log in with my other account. Because then I'll be able to play against 2,700, 2,600. So let me uh, let me log in. Uh, the five time there we go and put this up here of course whoops there we go all right okay one second i'm going to open the live split timer wherever i put it there we go 
Chessboard is off center. Well, I'm changing the overlay in one second. So, um, one second. 19.01.06, one second. 19.01.06, there we go. I changed the scene, of course. Where is it? There we go. All right, uh, it looks close enough. Um, let me edit the layout. Just resubbed for three months. Yeah, that's good. This, there we go. All right, one second, you guys, and we will start. Let me take my headphones off. Let me put my glasses on if I have them somewhere. Okay, let's get going. Hopefully, we can get some games. Let's hit play. Let's get going. It's still off center? No, uh, it's a little off center right now. Once the game starts, it'll be on center. Once the game starts, it'll be right. Once I get a game, it'll, it'll be fine. Let's challenge this guy, Kowalski. Yay! Yeah, I, I, I already hit the uh, play. Searching for the rating range. There's got to be somebody who wants to play. Hmm. See if I can get a game. Thank you so much. To it's Beansy. Thank you so much, Kaiser Kaiser Soze for the three months. Okay, come on. There's got to be somebody who wants to play in the rating range. I'm challenging twenty seven thirty nine to like three thousand. There, there's so many people who could play. Um, trying, trying to get a game. One game outgoing. If you want challenge. Yeah, it seems like nobody wants to play. Like, I, I've got a bunch of challenges outgoing. Maybe nobody wants to get disrespected. Come on. I want to play some chess. Why can't I challenge anybody? This is insane. I think there's a powder hound for the 22 months. I have a bunch of challenges out to lower rated players even. That's... Okay, there we go. Control start. All right, let's let's disrespect this this clown. Okay, it's twenty seven eighty four. What's he? Uh, FM thinks he's so great at chess. Nice high rating. I mean, ridiculous. Probably thinks he's as good as Levy, even though he's an FM and not an IM. Let's go A three. I'm gonna just keep pushing P. It's off center still. Shit. Why is the board off center? What the heck? Right. Why is it? Why is it off center? What did I do wrong? Uh, let's go E six here. I'll adjust it on the fly. Nobody cares. Yeah, it's a little bit janky, so be it. I don't care. Um, okay. So go here. One second. I'll, I'll fix it after the game, you guys. Let me just win a game first, and I'll fix it. Let's go here. I, I mean, I can't do it while I'm trying to play the game. I'm going to go D5 here. I'm, I'm down a pawn, but nobody cares. Let's go here and C5. Yeah, at least you can see the board. The clocks are messed up. I'll fix it afterwards. Time doesn't matter because this guy is just bad at chess. Like, I'm not even going to need to flag him. I'm just going to beat him down with queen a5. Browser window is maximized. Uh, I don't know why it's off. I don't know why it's off. It's, maybe it's because I'm not... Maybe I see an upgrade button. Maybe some of the t buttons are off a little bit. I'll trade. This guy is not any good, so let's just take the pawn. Yeah. No, it's not about toggling tabs. It's that, it's that I, it's, it's not easy to do it on the fly. That's the problem. He can't go knight's three because then he loses the pawn. Go Bishop A6. It, main reason that the times are off is because, like, I think it has the wrong Windows capture or something. And I, I, I don't want to do that right here. So let's take, go here. I'm going to stack the rooks. Of course, this guy's just garbage. Look at how bad he is. Like, he didn't even understand. Like, I played A3 to give him the double pawns, and now positionally, he's just going to lose this game because he just doesn't know how to play shots. I mean, it's just pathetic. 2784. And, like, all I have to do is go one, two, three, push the pawn down. And that's why I won the game. See, that's why you don't need to know any openings because you can just push a pawn down and win the game. Let's go here, hit the pawn. Time to resign, homie. All your pawns are loose. loose. You have a war mill for the two months. Appreciate it. Just resign, bro. It's time to just resign. No need to suffer anymore. Okay. Now, I mean, isn't A2 just hanging? Yeah. I mean, what is this dude doing? Come on. Come on, bro. Really? Must think he's like Hikaru or something. Clock is off too. I'm going to adjust it after this game, you guys, but I'm not going to do it while I'm playing the game. Just takes, don't it? 
Yeah, this is this is 2784 for you guys. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. <sighs> Horrible. Horrible. I think I played better than this guy when I was 10 years old. Okay, resigns. Let me stop the clock. Um, let me adjust it. Give me one second. Let me change the scene. Um, okay, now I'll just adjust it one second. Why is it off, actually? Wait, that's that's okay. I need the name tab is wrong. Okay, this looks correct. The name is correct. The names are correct or not correct. Sorry, I need to take my glass off. I can't actually. I can't actually see the editing. One second. One second, you guys. Okay, that's good. One second. Name white. Opponent. Just adjust this back over here. Good. Okay, and let me change the clocks. Give me one second, you guys. Second. That's good. And then my clock make this. I think that's good. One second, you guys. Just making sure that I get the eyes incorrect. Okay, that's good. Hmm. Close enough. Second. Sorry, I'm just editing this, you guys. I think this looks good. I'll change it back. You guys can tell me if this looks good or not. It looks close enough. I know it's a little bit off, but I don't care. It's close enough, so I don't care. Um, let's keep going. Okay. Wait, what? This wrong wrong account. What the heck? Free subs for three months. Okay. Go again. Let's disrespect this guy. Let's play H4. I think it looks okay, right? I mean, I know it's not ideal, but it's something. Uh, or the image is still off a little bit. Okay, that looks good. I don't even need my time here. That's how good I am at this, this, this stupid game. Um, name of the opponent. Yeah, like, I, I don't even care. He's just, it doesn't matter. I, I can give him time odds. It doesn't matter. Yeah, there we go. Okay, whatever. Play knight g5. Who needs time anyway? Not me. Um, music is good, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's play f3. Benjamin Feingold doesn't like it when you push your f-pawn, but I don't care who Benjamin Feingold is. I'm just, he, he doesn't know anything about chess. Let's play e4 here. Thank you, Nullify. Thank you, so CDM, CCC for the prime. Appreciate it. Okay, I go d4 here. <laughs> Um, he goes e6, so this guy doesn't even know what he's doing. He literally gives me a big white center. And that's why you play f3 in the opening. Exactly. That's why you go at f3. It's just a very, very fundamentally sound move to build your connect four. Very, very straightforward. Very, very solid. Yeah. All right. He goes b6. Let's go bishop e3. Probably queen d2. Big white center. Yeah, I castle my king. I've got all the space in the world. My man has no space. You know, there were some some other clowns on our chest the other day. Like, play a groove though. Play these hyper modern openings. You don't play hyper modern openings if you're new to the game because you give your opponent the whole center and then you don't know how to play against it. So let's go king b1. So fridge those idiots. Let's go king b1 here. I can take on h7. I can also play g3 here. I'll play g3. Maybe takes an f4. Just keep building more center. Just take. Yeah. Let's go bishop g2, maybe f4 next move. Again, look at this massive center I have. I just got so much mucho, mucho, mucho center. Goes to e5, I just play f4 again. Look at this position. It's a thing of beauty. Now, he does a b5 to try and open up the queen side, but I'm not even afraid. I'm just going to keep pushing p here. Let's go f5 here. Just look at this overwhelming space advantage that I have. Overwhelming. Now, I could play f6 and put the bishop in jail. Yeah, the bishop's now in jail for the rest of the game. No squares to go to. Let's just go uh, b3, consolidate my queen side. 
go here I'm gonna reroute my bishop at some point because my, my man just he's just got a dead B he's got a dead B on f8 it's just completely dead it can't go anywhere just dead which means his rook is also dead too it doesn't help matter so you have bass camp with 100 bits what rating should you play hypermodern openings I don't know I would say in general terms hypermodern openings um I'm gonna go b4 because he's just playing down a bishop um I would say somewhere around expert level you can start to play them I think with some some effectiveness I would say expert level probably um okay I'm gonna go here looking to go king a1 and play on this b file Hikaru gets on stage for MIT and all of a sudden has no respect for human life okay dude extreme much okay I'm gonna go here to make sure he can't ever push this pawn I'm just making sure that the king side is completely glued no ideas of pushing h4 so now his bishop and his rook are just dead forever and now I'm in typical um I can obviously trade here but then he takes with a pawn no I guess I'll go here I'm looking to angle him on this b file now I will take because now the now the files open I think I can even just go like bishop h3 but I think I'm gonna go the other way I'm gonna try to go this way he's hanging on I give this guy some credit for trying to hang on desperately you know I I don't even care I'm just gonna sack and now he's gonna lose on the light squares because again this bishop is stuck so that means the king's stuck the king can't go anywhere because his bishop is dead go here now rook h3 I can play bishop f2 if I want to even just like honestly even just bishop f2 is good now rook h2 logical I have slightly misplayed this but it's not even going to matter because I just go knight d1 to hold the bishop when a5 I'll just bring in the the bishop he just can't move anything bishop can't go anywhere king can't go anywhere this is exactly how you should not play chess okay now he goes bishop e7 I give him some credit he thinks he can escape but I don't even care about that I I so don't care about the move that I'm going to ignore it let's see how do I ignore it um what's the easiest bishop e1 is a funny way to ignore it actually bishop e1's a very funny way to ignore it yeah I'm just gonna go here and take so if he takes I just take the rook so he's gonna have to take my queen then I take his bishop oh no I actually blundered oh no he's got rook b8 oh shoot I blundered this but actually it doesn't matter because his, his, his king is still stuck yeah everything's still completely stuck here he can't move the king without losing the knight so even though he activated the bishop kind of He's still dead lost. Thank you to IMH for the two. Thank you to QT. Thank you to Ukrainian Bull. Thank you to IHAXES for the prime. But now I'm just going to eat the juicer and go knight h6. He's trying to do something. Actually, do I take? I guess I should. Hmm. Still good for me, but it's not quite what I wanted. This might require some finesse. But I'm going to win this pawn, I think. Yeah, I'm going to win this pawn, and then I should win the game. Um... Oh wait, I'm down. Wait, why am I so low on time? What the heck? I didn't realize I'm so low. How am I so low on time? I'm just having too much fun. Oh no, I messed this up. Yeah, I messed it up. <laughs> I got too low on time and messed it up. Yeah, when disrespect goes wrong, I messed it up. Terrible. Oh, right, but I didn't update my score. Shoot. Um, wait, do I, I have one more win and one more draw? Go H5. Wait, what is my... um? I have one more win and one more draw, right? I just realized I didn't, I didn't, I didn't update it. What's going on? Why is it not letting me do it? Play F6 here and E5. Why is it? It's not letting me update. Um, update. Why is it not letting me do it? One second. No, it's not letting me update the score. I don't know why. Wait one second. There we go. Why is that so slow to load? Three twenty-seven, and that's one more draw, right? With a pawn? No, I don't have a script for auto update. I did, but it got all messed up. Thank you, Cranebull, for the gift of subs. What is this? 
Look at this guy. He's such trash. He thinks he can play Queen H5, but I go Knight F7 and he just loses the game. Pathetic. That's pathetic. Um, let's go here and just E4. I mean, it's just down a piece for nothing. He thought he had like some basic cheese tactic, and so I'm like a 1200. Guy doesn't know anything. I think there's a Kung, Kung set for the six months. Let's go here, trade. I have an extra bishop, so I, 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 I just want to trade pieces here. Go here. I'm just going to kill him on the light squares here. I mean, what an epic disaster. Look at this knight. Look at this bishop g4. Oh, mama mia, this is bad. Let's go check, I guess. You can always take. I'm even just going to go here. I don't even care about the rooks. Just keep pushing, pushing P. Don't even care. Literally don't care. I just go for mate, and he's gonna he's gonna have to resign, or just get checkmated. That's not how you get it done. Keep going. Another win. I'll I'll update it in a second. Let's keep keep going. Let's go h four h five. Goal is to get to three thousand, you guys. This guy I think he's doing. I'm just gonna keep pushing P on the wings, and we're gonna get some wins soon. Oh, it's the same dude. He got. He's the same dude who got the draw. I forgot. Let's go a five here. Yeah, there was like some kind of weird checkmate lag, right? Yeah, I'll play somebody else after this. I didn't realize it's four in a row. I keep pushing P on the king side too. I mean, this is why you just keep pushing, as as as, as Jas or Sarah one would say, push, keep pushing. Thank you so much, Desonance, for the bits. Push, baby, push, right? Or something like that. I don't know. Something along those lines. Well, my position isn't wonderful. It's good enough though, especially against a potter like this guy. Just takes terrible move. Um, uh, how do I play this though? That's not a good move, but I don't have obvious decisions. So I'll go knight h3. Go here, consolidate the connect three. If a4, I just eat it. Just take the take the pawn. Maybe there's a Gago Musaman for the prime. Thanks for Gago Musaman. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so he's trying to go C6. I don't care. Play C6. I, I don't care. I dare you. You don't have it in you to play this move. Oh, he does. Okay. Well, I, I, I didn't think he did, but it's still bad. So even, even though he did, it's still bad. Maybe there's a Carcifer for the prime. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Um, let's go Bishop B3 and hit the knight on C5 here. Uh, I can play b4. I can also just take on c5. I can also go knight d5 here. b4 also move. Um, so I'll just trade and go knight d5. This isn't actually all that wonderful, though, I have to admit. I'm better, but I'm not much better, which is kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. I think there's an Elton spe Speculador for the prime. I think there's an Elton Speculador. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, Sir Elton Speculador. Let's go here. I had knight d5, of course, but I don't care. Ooh, Bishop F8 is actually... Okay, I gotta go here. He's actually playing this quite well. I didn't even see Bishop F8. I guess I'll go here. I'm, I'm misplaying this. Severely misplaying this. Not even kind of misplaying it. If I take, I can still take. Um, Let's go here, I guess. Go here to hit the queen. Yeah, this is. I have not played this particularly well. Hit the pawn. Hmm. I guess I'll go here in rook a7. Yeah, I've actually really misplayed this. It's not the dream at all. Go here, attack the queen. Oh, that's a horrible move, too. But actually, wait, no, maybe I can go in for the kill with knight g5. Yeah, knight f7, knight h6, I'm probably winning. Of course he's playing while he's got the match of his life. True, true story. True, true, true story. Now I go z3. I can eat the pawn. I can also play f3, which is interesting, too. I can also go f4. I'm trying to figure out if knight f7 works here. I really want to make knight f7 work, but I don't think it actually is working. I'm very, very unfortunately. 
And play fe3, f4's move. I'm just going to take it. It's the safest way to play this. I don't like it, but it's the safest objective way to save the game. Try to trade some queens here. Because again, if he, if he gets low on time, I just don't believe he can draw a game. Okay, so I go here. Force the trade. Oh no, did I just blunder? Of course I did. I did blunder. So I have rookie one or something. Take. Go here, hit the pawn. Yeah, I completely fumbled this. Being a little bit too casual about everything for some reason. Uh, wait, I need to come up with an actual move here. Um, wait, wait, I have to come up with a move here. What am I doing? I think I'm just going to sack and go here. I have to move quickly. I have 97 maybe. How do I get this pawn rolling? D6 is a horrible move too. Ah, oh, shoot. What am I doing? I don't believe this. Probably getting made it here somehow. Jeez, what the heck? Oh my gosh, really? Am I really just losing here? This is ridiculous. Why am I why was I so slow in this game? No, and this is also just me. What am I doing? Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean it's it's all losing anyway. No, nah, it was horrible. Let's play let's play a new three through one. That was just terrible. I thought he was lower on time also than he was at the critical moment. Yeah, it was just garbage. Yeah, let's play somebody else. Actually, I'll rematch him one more time. Let's let's see. I'll play him one more if you want. So I'm just going to beat him badly. I'm just going to ignore chat. One more time, and I'm just going to crush him. Just blow him off the face of the earth in this game. No, I mean, I'm actually just going to blow him off the face of the earth in this game. Go here, d6 and knight f6. I'm playing knight b7 or knight a6. I'm going to go here and play for c5. Not playing this game particularly well. Still probably better if I'm precise. Play this f5, which looks wrong. Let me see what I can do here. Bishop e6 is completely fine. Rook g8 is also <laughs> completely fine to play rook g5. Act upon. That can take and now resigns. Knight d4 here. Take the bishop. Yeah, I'm just going to not talk during this game. The rook c3. Rook e6 is fine. Takes and rook f8 is what I'm going to play. And I think the knight's getting trapped here if I'm not crazy. 
Knight g5, rook e5. I mean, this knight has to be getting trapped here. Knight h7, rook f7 is game over. Play c5, but even just knight b5 is good enough. Because he, he can't save the knight. He has to go here, and then I go here, and the knight's just completely boxed. I can't believe I lost that last. It was so bad. Yeah. Just trade the bishops. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's play one more. I'll play one more to make it the even six. I don't like stopping on an odd number. Gonna do the same thing. Okay, this time I'm just gonna. Uh, I plays e6. I'll go g3. Guard the pawn. Blindfold? No, it's not blindfold. I can see the board. E4. I should be a little bit better. The structure should favor me. I mean, F4 is fine. C3 is fine. I'm going to play F4 here. Idea E5. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Hard to judge. That does hang upon. I think I will just grab it. Because Knight D4, I just go Queen D1 and C3. Uh, you did stop at five time US champion five is odd, bro. Uh, I didn't, I mean, I, there was this thing called streaming that kind of started to take over and F5 looks correct. It's just terrible. I mean, he can try to sack, but, oh, actually he can sack because I just realized, yeah, this pawn's a little bit weak, but if I go knight a3, e4, bishop f4 is just winning. And rook h4, I take in block, so this is all good. Yeah, I mean, this thing called streaming kind of took over just a little bit, you guys. Go C4, I mean, that's not a bad move. But again, I'm up a piece here, so if I don't do something insane, this should be winning. Takes and bishop D2, I mean, it's also queen A4, but I'll just take and go here. Force a trade. He gets some pawns, but I don't know. I, I get everything else. He takes and a rookie one. I mean, this is just winning. I just go here, hit the bishop. Castles. I mean, every, 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 all roads lead to Rome here, but I think I'm going to go for the cleanest one, which is queen h5. Thanks for Anak for the 31. Matthew Kicker, yeah, I mean, good, good luck, dude. Thank you, Randall, for the prime. Kurt Simbler. Thank you to Belzebub. Okay. And, and, time to resign. Go here. Queen h7, mate, next move. Yeah, I can't believe I lost this, this guy. So bad. So, so bad. One, five, seven, six, and nine are allowed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it resigns. Okay, let's find somebody else. Let's click on a new game. I'll stop the timer for a second. Um, how many wins is that? That was two more that I didn't count, right? So that's two more. Two more after the loss. Yeah. Yeah, that's two more. So let me adjust it. 329. There we go. Okay. Well, we should be able to get a game. Okay, a new three-minute game. Do I own Amazon? No, Amazon is owned by Jeff Bezos. Uh, let's send out some challenges if I can't get a game. Kind of annoying. Uh, let's see, who's online? Let's see, like, a 28-22. Uh, who's all, who else is online? There's some other people probably in my rating range. Challenge Obito. Let's see who else? Chess Network. Oh, let's challenge Chess Network. Is Chess Network Jerry? I've never played Jerry, I don't think. Let's challenge... Oh, Chess Network is not accepting challenges. That's very disappointing. That's very disappointing. I just tried to challenge Chess Network. Yeah, Jerry's not open for challenges. Very, very disappointing. Um, okay, so I'm I'm waiting for a game... Let's see, what else do I have? Okay, play. Okay, waiting for a game. Okay, there we go. Let's start. Holy moly, what the heck? 3001? What the heck? What? Is it a joke? <laughs> I 
Well, okay. I mean, this is some guy who started playing chess the day Gary quit. So obviously he's not very good, right? Or he is very good. There, there are two, two possibilities. Uh, I think I'm going to play d5 here. There's nice time. I'm going to play a3, of course, to weaken the structure. Could have taken and played b5, which is interesting as well. Um, I guess I should take. Too much to play knight f6. If he takes, I just take. Okay, one. Again, I assume bishop e7 is correct. It must be Kasparov. There's zero chances of Gary Kasparov. But what's this guy? What, who is this dude? I mean, seriously, I'm curious. He's played enough games. So That's like a legitimate real, real, real account. I'm impressed. I'm play h6. I can also just take. I can also play h6, which looks iffy at best. I'm just going to take and play like knight a6 maybe. Knight b4 is an idea as well. I don't have a great position here, but again, it's not the end of the world. You're saying this guy's a cheater. I, I, I don't know. I don't really buy it, but maybe. Oh, great. What was that? You can just take. Really? So the, I'm looking for something in this game just to get some idea if you guys are right or wrong. Time usage is uh, concerning me just a little bit, I have to say. Time usage is concerning me just a touch. Go here and trade. This is either this is either a GM or something's going on. I don't know which one. Both both are realistically possible here. Time usage is um concerning me. I I can't pretend. I don't know. I I don't have a good feeling. I I don't have a good feeling about this. I got to be honest. Well, now we'll really see. Now we'll really see. Can this guy actually win this end game? Because this is not an easy end game to win. In fact, it's very hard to win this for white. G5 is a move. I'm wondering about it. Whatever. I'll just play here. I'm going to go G5. City 95 just took five dollars out of Bezos's pocket. Thanks. Yeah, this feels really weird. <laughs> this feels really weird. Oh my gosh, and I trapped my rook. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, I just trapped my rook for no reason. Yeah, yeah, I just trapped my rook. I'm not going to play this guy again. There's, yeah. I, I have strong opinions on that game. I feel like it was someone up to a certain point and then not someone past that point. It was someone up to a certain point and then it wasn't the same person. So I'm not playing him. I'm not counting that either because I'm 90% sure, I would say. 90% sure. Yeah. Come on. What's, what's come on? Come on about what? Yeah, I, I mean, it's not even a question. That was not the, that was not the same player, at the very least. Um, so no, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not playing again. No, because I don't want the same thing to happen. So I'll tell you what's going to happen. If I play again, I'm going to get a bad position. And suddenly the moves are going to be like very mediocre past a certain point. Yeah, no, I'm just not going to deal with that right now. There's no need for it. Yeah. I mean, he played that game almost perfectly, and suddenly he started misplaying and got into an end game when he could have just beaten me very easily. I mean, Queen C5 was a great move, too. Yeah. Yeah. Up to a point that was very good. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I play again. Wait, how do I cancel this? Okay, so now challenge again. No, oh, why can't I get a game? Let me refresh the page. Okay, so I'm all split. Surely somebody wants to play some blitz. Let me challenge chess network again. I don't think it'll work. Or I can't even load it for some reason. Why can't I load it? Is that not another challenge? Let's see who else is there? Why can't I get a game? Doom, 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 doom. Send out a few challenges. Somebody's got to want to play. I mean, I could still play on my main, main account. If there's anybody. 79.4% accuracy. It's not about the accuracy. It's that he played perfect, and then he, then he found a way to get into an end game where it was still winning, but it was very tricky. Um, that's not to say I didn't have a draw with King D6 at a critical moment, but still. Yeah. Um, okay, I can't get a game, so I guess I'll log with my main account then. It's kind of annoying. Um, doom, doom, doom. Let's see if I can get a game on my main account then. Annoying. Very annoying, not gonna lie. Um, oh, wait, no, I got a game. What the heck? I got a game. Wait, okay, let's start the clock. I was I literally logged in on my on my account on the other monitor. Okay, let's go here. Posture check? No need for that. No need. Um Yeah, that's that's just very funny. Okay, go, let's go F6. Who who is this dude? Some 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 somebody? Let's play E5, maybe knight g4. Great outpost for the knight, bishop c5. Maybe just d5. I'm gonna strike in the center here. E4 maybe? Or do I take? I'm gonna go E4 here, which is actually not a very good move, I don't think. But he can't go knight c3 because he hangs the pony. You don't want to hang your pony. F4, what? The heck is F4? Did he mean to go? Maybe he meant to go F3 and mouse slipped. I think he meant to go F3, but he mouse slipped it. I mean, this is really ugly. I go here. Thank you so much to Elvis Drive for the 16 months. Thank you so much to uh, Roshu's Kid for the Prime. Okay, I guess I just take. Underscore doctor just took five dollars out of Bezos's pocket. Thanks. Um, let's go check. I guess I'll go here on Bishop G4. This is actually not amazingly great for me. Weirdly, I make a check. That rainbow 
guy underscore just thanks so much to that rainbow guy for the tier one thanks so much to that rainbow guy i appreciate it thank you of course i'm gonna cash roll here probably gonna take and i take this is not at all what i wanted i'm kind of confused as to what happened in my position because now he gets a big white center too and i'm just a little bit confused as to what i've done here i have rookie one I guess I just eat the juice or takes, loses the queen. I think I have 95 here to hit the queen. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. Um, trade takes. Yeah, I mean, this 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 dude is just busted here. I'll go here, knight d3, bishop e2 is uh, oh, spaghetti-o. There we go, GG. Another one in the books. I should almost just mark it up ahead of time, because that's what I used to do, and that's the pure disrespect move. But let's do the disrespect move, move um, and let's mark it as a win. I guess we'll play rookie four. Oh, wait, but he can... I mean, it's still winning, but... Yeah, why did I do this? Go here. Yeah, let's just mark it. I mean, it's it's got to be winning. Uh, if I check and take... Oh, wait. I, I already marked it, so I better not mess this up. Go here. Maybe it doubled nice for the 10 months. Yeah, now I go check and I eat the juicer. I go king d6, I guess. Yeah, king d6 and rook f5 and then a5. Who else hopes he loses now? I mean, you, you want to get banned, bro? Hoping that I lose? I'm the five time. Why would, I, why, why would I lose? What kind of bad logic is that? I think I have five time to lose. Give me a break. Forget about it. Let's go check. Uh, let's go here. And now I'm going to mate him with b5 next move. <laughs> ban a mod oh was that a mod who said that i didn't even notice who said that um was that a mod wait i gotta scroll up um oh that was a mod that was shadoc i didn't even notice that okay that's hilarious actually i didn't notice that i actually didn't notice that. okay i didn't i didn't realize that's hilarious <laughs> Checkmate. Better luck next time, dude. Um, okay, let's go H4 again. Go H5. Keep pushing P. Uh, I think I'll play C3 and D4 to claim some stake. Oh, he goes for a four-move checkmate. Like, what is it? who does this guy think he is? He thinks I'm going to blunder a four-move checkmate? Cheesy, cheesy. Cheesy McCheesy. Go here. Could have played Bishop D2, too. I'm going to go h6 to put pressure on his king side. He goes there. I'm just going to develop normally like a sane person here. Okay, c5 is, however, probably a good move. But I play a3. Now I have a double op combo. I mean, it's okay. I'm going to go here and e4. Oh, yeah, f3 maybe was a horrible. Eh. Maybe not horrible, but not great either. If he takes, he gets scoped. I guess he's not afraid of getting scoped by d5. Okay. Let's take the juicer. I mean, I have the double op combo. Go uh, here to trade the queens. Trade these queens. King f1, knight e2. Should be a, okay. Here he, Oh, wait. <coughs> if, if he goes knight e3, takes six, queen f6. I have knight e2, and do I, do I lolly him? No, I don't, because he can sack a queen. So I'll go here. Thank you so much to Dr. Wordle for the prime. I'd love to lolly him on g7 here. That'd be great. It was knight e3. I assume I take. Takes with the pawn. I guess I'll go here and trade. Okay, that's a good... Actually, that's a very, very... Ah, what did I do to the... Uh, I guess I go here and take. Yeah. Oh, frustrating. What did I just do? I just completely messed this up. I'm still fine, but... Ugh. Actually, what did I do to this? Uh, I'm still not... Actually, I'm not fine. What did I do? I'll still survive, I think, unless I do something insane. But this is not. This is not it. Where's b5? I'm going to go a4, try to play against a pawn. Because if I get rook a1, I feel like I'm getting in, maybe, somehow. Rook a1. When my rook gets in here, there's some issues for black to deal with. Okay, now I can check or take. I think I check first. Actually, if here I have check, wait... Knight g5, king e7, there's nothing. So I guess I just take. 
I mean, it's a little bit scary for both sides to play. Oh, here to hit the knight. It's a tricky position to play. Bishop d3, logical. Okay, I have b3. Yeah, I've got to stop this bishop c4 move. This bishop c4 move is a huge issue if he gets it. So I got to stop it. Let's go here. Takes, which I don't like. Um, go here, hit the knight, hit the pawn. I have rook a7. This is very close to not working also. I do this though. Rook d4, he's still got bishop e2, which is so annoying. Oh, do I have rook d7? I think I'm going to go here, go back. Still threatening like rook d7. A lot of threats here. c2. I think it's good g4 here. Wait, what did I... Wait, I meant to go to E2. Uh, I meant to go to E2. I just messed this up. What the heck? The heck did I just do to this position? I just completely messed this up for no, no good reason at all. Uh, let's go here. Oh, I could have traded and gone rook, rook. Oh my gosh, what did I just do? I could have just traded. Ugh, getting so careless. I could have just traded and gone rook a5. What the heck was that? So ridiculous. Oh, and I just walked into mate one. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay. That was horrible. Ugh. I'll play one more, and then I think I'm going to stop and just play regular blitz or take a break, because that, that was so bad. And now my scoring tab isn't opening either. Let's go d5 takes. Let's c5. That was so bad. It was just much better out of the opening. Let's just play normal knight f6. Um, yeah, that was really, really bad. <sighs> this castle. I, you know, you've seen me lose a lot of points. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, this this is just uh, this just this is on my this is just a speed run. This is my main account. Yeah. No, no, I'm just like I'm I'm getting a little bit sloppy here. Yeah, I'll stop after this one because I'm I'm actually just like making bad moves. Go here and trade. I think it's over to Adam in the need for the three months. Yeah, but as far as blitz goes, there's not much I can do about that. Let's go here and force a trade. I mean, there just isn't much I can do. That's just reality. Queen e2 is a move. I don't think it's a great... I have d... No, I don't have d4. I'm going to go rook a5. I don't even know what rook a5 actually does, but it looks like a cool move. Okay, he's actually starting to suddenly play better. Much better, actually, than he was before. And I don't even know why I did that. I mean, I'm going to have to win an endgame, which is not going to be super trivial. Adam and Keetle just resubbed for three months. F4 is not a good move, though, because now the bishop is better placed. Uh, I guess I'm just going to bring the other rook around. Maybe rook e8 at some point. Let's go here. The rook c8 is a, uh, is a move. It's not a great move, but I think I'm going to play it anyway. This is G4 logical. I can play F6 somewhere. I don't think I should. I think I'm gonna play G6. Or G5, of course. I mean, I can always take the bishop too, depending on the situation. King G3. So he's trying to do something here. I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Um, oh, he's trying to go H4. Oh, he's he's also trying to win material. So I'm gonna go here to trade the rooks. I'm going to go here, knight f6, maybe. Reroute the knight. Much better square on f6, potentially. Maybe. 
Yeah, he's got this, which I, of course, completely overlooked. Now I can go back and... Here. There. I mean, I guess I can play King F8 here. I'm trying to do something. This guy's playing really well, though. He's playing much better. The first game was absolutely abysmal by him, but he's played a lot better than the last two. So I kind of need to focus just a little bit. Using his time here, he goes knight f3, which is sort of a step in the wrong direction. It's knight d2. Wait a second. I feel like he's losing the thread just a little bit. Yeah, he's definitely losing the thread. Okay, I'm going to go d4 and just go all in here. Go here and trade. There's the game. Yeah, one more and then I'll stop against this guy. He's got check, I guess. Check. There we go, game over. Things are Lynn Ross. Okay, let's play A4. Thank you so much, Domino, Nadarov, and Steve Ross for the prime. Okay, I'm going to keep playing this. Again, I mean, he played the stupid Bishop C5, which is total nonsense. Goes E4. I guess I'll play Bishop F4 and E3. I don't even know if this is best. Do I take or do I? I think maybe I just play E3. Play A6, force a trade of pawns. Ah, uh, he goes there. Okay, I go here. Knight E2. Very standard so far. Nothing too exciting. C4 does give me B3, maybe. I play it. I think I should play B3 here. Now, do I take the knight or not is also a big question. I think I'm going to take uh, take the knight and then take the pawn. Should be marginally better to the pawn structure, but it also could be worse too. Somewhere in between, I don't know what's true. I'm going to go here, maybe knight c2, knight b4. Takes, wow, that's a horrible move. Horrible move. He just lets me get this great op on the dark square. I'm going to get some wooden shields, and he's going to lose this game in a pretty unhappy way pretty soon. This is already game over. Thanks so much to Super Robot Axe for 33 and L dub. He thinks he can put the knight on c4. I don't care, dude. You know, I, I don't care about your stupid knight. Put it on c4. Who cares? Not me. Um, let's just castle. I can play f3. Just smash the center here, and bad things are happening. Bad, bad things are happening. Yeah, he's he's he's, just, he's gonna get smoked here. Knight f5. I mean, I even have ideas like this in checkmate or bishop f8 in checkmate. I mean, I've got a knife on f5. As Gary Kasparov, the world chess champion, said, a knife on f5 is worth at least a queen. So it's just game over. He's going to lose the pawn or get made. It's a very weird fossil that I just created, but it's a beautiful one. Thank you so much to Professor X for the prime. Thank you so much to Professor X. He resigns. Let's keep going. Try to beat him two more. Get my rating back to like 2950. Um, again, I, I need to show no respect. So let's play A5, A4. This guy is very, very classical, his approach. As this guy is very, very classical. He's going to go like C3. So, so classical. I'm not used to this, I have to say. Wow, did not expect that. Okay, I'm not letting you win a pawn, bro. You don't get to capture this pawn on the edge. Sorry. Go here. I mean, you can play b4, but I just play n peasant and then queen d8 back. Play n peasant. Is there an actual threat here? Not really, but I, I just, I, I don't want to walk into some silliness, so I'm just going to go queen d8. Bishop g6 was also probably completely fine, but again, why, why, why give him some cheese? Go here, hit the knight. Could have traded too, I guess. Now he's got problems on the king's side or not. Do I go queen h4? Push about four, maybe? Oh, no, he's got queen f3. What the heck was that? Oh, no. Now queen h4 is just actually a terrible move. I guess I'll... I guess I'll go here... Got like knight b5 or something silly. Do I go f6 or e7? It's a big question mark. My gut says e7 just so I can put a knife on f5 at some moment. Again, he hangs a pawn. Can I 
This time I think I can actually take it. I'm gonna go for it. I have this to guard the B shop. Maybe not. It's hard hard to judge. Let's go here. As long as there's no G3 silliness, I should eventually be winning. Do I go F5 or F6? Probably F6 here. I need to be very careful how I play this. I'm like one move away. If I get Queen G3, I win the game. Get the pawn or the knight. Big question. Knight takes. Push by five knight C7. I take with a knight. Because on this I have knight e7. Oh, he goes. Oh, he's just got bishop e4, which I didn't even see. But I have g4, maybe? No, yeah, I have g4 here. Love the shade. Yeah. Bro thought he was Ikaro and could play like bishop e4, but now he's just going to lose the game. Check, and you lose your queen and knighty knight. Thank you so much, uh, Ma Namas Gallery, for the 29 months. Appreciate it. All right, we got the win. Let's, let's play one more. One more will take me to 332, right? So one more is 332. How can I see the black piece with those glasses on? Because I can, that's why. Okay, we play another like Caro Constructure. Keep developing. Knight GE2, of course, and F3. I think A3 is correct to force a trade. Okay, um, he can just castle here. Why not? I mean, he's got knight g4, but I think I have g3 here and like knight f4. Position's not ideal, but it's playable. I can see the best moves with those glasses on. Exactly. That's like all that matters. Let's go here and queen f4. It's weird because even though my king side looks a little bit weak, it's actually, I think, quite solid and stable. Kind of weird. Okay, I guess I'll go here. Maybe queen d3, maybe queen f4. Uh, knight f4 also is a pretty solid move to hit the pawn. Because now the pawn's guarded. That's why I removed the bishop. And I just go here, and I think I'm almost just okay. Almost being the key word. Yeah, it should be pretty decent. Thank you so much to Scotch for the two months. Knight a5. Now, knight a5 hangs something, but I don't know what it hangs. Or I just trade and play the end game. Actually, I think you know what? It's it's not the right time. Let's just play the end game with rookie one. I didn't do it before because then he could trade and take the juicer, but now the knight's here, not here. Yeah. Knight d5 is a big threat because of the pony. Gotcha. Or is it? Just took five dollars out of Let's just take. Thanks. Wicked. Wicked is right. I agree. Wicked. Okay, if he took, I have check check and then I tickle the king and win the queen. Uh, he goes bishop d7. I can obviously just trade and go queen c3. And I mean, maybe I'm wrong. This looks like this looks like a dream with queen c3 here. With b5, I can play a4. Bishop d3 looks pretty rock solid to remove the pony. And then queen c5 or queen c7, also very scary. a4, no trick, right? Yeah, I'm going to go a4 and take. I just want to make sure he has no weird nonsense on diags. Um, what's the easiest way to win here is a big question. AB5 looks good. I think I'm just going to trade and trade. Simple. Not b4. h5 is a move, but it fixes the pawn in the wrong square. So I'm just going to bring my king closer. Because knight a4, maybe? Great. And I think I'm going to rotate my knight to e3. Ah, he's got knight a4 again, but he doesn't do it. I guess I bring my king closer. So it's way too, uh, way too technical of an end game, but I should be winning here because I can just slowly walk the king over. Go, um, I'm gonna go here. Uh, knight c4 is just gg. Just eat the juicer. I have the wide peepos and it's game over. Oh, I said that was gonna be the last one, right? Whatever, I'll, I'll play two more. Nobody cares. Thank you, Swamp Pottle, for the five months. 
Okay, let's play a French with a pawn a5. It's disrespectful, but maybe it's not disrespectful enough. So maybe to be even more disrespectful, let's make a check and play some kind of weird. This actually, wait. This is actually, wait a second. After knight six, this is, this is almost a main line, in fact. I'm going to play d6 here. This is almost a main line because it's very similar to like a Bogo Indian. This is actually somehow turned into theory, weirdly. Very, very weirdly. Okay, he wants to go B-shop, G5. So I'll trade the B-shops, and then I'll play Knight, C6. Actually, this has turned into almost... This is very much... This is, It's funny. This has actually turned into a real game. So my dis... Yeah, it's not disrespect, but it's his own fault. He didn't let me disrespect him. That's, that's not my fault. Is it? Okay, go here to fix a juicer. Um, the, my opponent disrespected his own pawn structure, which is just not acceptable. I mean, he disrespected his pawn structure by letting me fix the weakness. Um, I'll take, go here. He can obviously sack, but I'm not too worried. I mean, if he takes, I just take. And I, I okay, he goes knight f1. I'll go here, hit the pawn, hit the rook. It's time to resign again pretty soon. Um, go here, target the juicer. I'm just going to go for the classic double stack and kill him on the b2 square. Why do I have a delay on the stream? I don't have a delay. Oh, knight h2 is actually a really, really good move. I didn't see that. Oh, that's actually a very good move. Shoot. Yeah, I, there's no delay on the stream. Ugh. I could play g5, but no. Ah, uh, who cares? Let's go rook b8 and queen e7, I guess. Rock and roll. Isn't that a free juicer? It is, but is it? It is, but is it? It is, but is it? Of course, that's an oxymoron. What am I saying? Whatever, it's a free pawn. I might as well take it. Sue's the soul. I think I'll go back and play like knight h5 and g6. A rock and roll. Mm, I don't love my position. But I think it's okay. Got like G6 maybe to hold the juice. Holds it a little bit. It's not great, but it's playable. I think it's a salty staline for the prime. Thanks for salty staline. Queen E3 now. I could play F5. I could also just take the juice. I think it just takes. If it takes, I take and I have F5. I think it's okay. Have I seen the 13 year old versus Fabiano? Wait, am I crazy? This does not look right. Um, I have f6 here. He checks and I go king h8. Takes, I just take. Yeah, this should be winning, unless I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. Merc g8 looks strong, but maybe not the strongest move. Uh, whatever, who cares? Just go for it. Uh, I think Rook G2 wins. Queen E2 might also win because of the, the classic kebab. If I go Queen E2, isn't there just a clean kebab? Yeah, that's just a classic kebab with the queen. Yeah. Shock takes, and then I have Queen G3 and checkmate in Uno. If he takes a juice. There we go. I think there's an East Coast for the prime. All right, one more against this guy. One more. But I can't stop on an odd number. That is my one rule, no matter what account or anything it is. Uh, someone's asking, I'm not playing uh, in, in what? Grand Chester, you mean, or what? I don't know what you mean. Let's click new three and I'll stop the clock temporarily. Yeah, what, do, what are you guys asking? I don't know what the question is. Um, I, am I friends with Fabiano? I mean, we're on pretty good terms. I, I wouldn't say we're like besties or anything, but I mean, there's a lot of mutual respect. No, I'm not playing the Grand Chester for a couple of reasons. First of all, two of the Grand Chester events directly clash with the Chess Champions Tour. Secondly, I don't think it's really much of a qualifier for the World Championship, so I don't see a good reason to play it. Simple answer. We're waiting for a new game. Yeah, I, I lost a few games early, which kind of is annoying. Um, but, yeah. 
Can I get a new game or not? Okay, I guess I can't. So let me log with my main. Let me go to my main account then. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go back to my main account. I will stop the clock and change the scene. There we go. All right. Okay, there we go. Oof, let me take the glasses off. Um, yeah. Okay, let's play. Let's play some normal chess. There are a lot of people online ahead of the next title Tuesday. In the 2100 in bullet and rapid and have been stuck there for about six months is there any courses i can do to get to um 2100 is actually like a really tough spot to get stuck in because that's a spot where you have to work really hard to improve i don't know if there's anything specific i mean i think i would need to know what you're doing wrong like is it are you losing games because of the opening are you getting bad positions in the opening are you blundering in the end game is it middle game strategies where is um like where are things going wrong? It's that's that's a very tough level to be at. Twenty one hundred is one of the worst levels to be at, for sure. Um, Chess.com Elo for FM would be like twenty five hundred blitz, I guess, around there. Okay, I have like twenty challenges out going. Somebody's got to want to play me, or else we're gonna do.